In this lecture, we're going to talk about Cauchy-Euler equations. So a Cauchy-Euler equation is a linear ODE of the form a sub n x to the n times the nth derivative of y with respect to x plus a sub n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 times the n minus first derivative of y with respect to x all the way down to a1x dy dx plus a naught y equals g of x on the other side. So this Cauchy-Euler equation is, uh, basically you can tell it's a Cauchy-Euler equation if the power on the coefficient x, or the x in the coefficient, is the same as the derivative that it's paired with, right? All right, so if we wanna solve a Cauchy-Euler equation, we're gonna take the following approach. So for a second order ODE, the Cauchy-Euler equation will look like this, ax squared y double prime, plus bxy prime plus cy equals zero. We're gonna assume that the solution takes the form y equals x to the m power. And so that means that the first derivative would be m times x to the m minus one, and the second derivative would be m minus one times m times x to the m minus two power. If we plug y and its derivatives into the differential equation, we would get ax squared times m minus one times m times x to the m minus two plus bx times m x to the m minus one plus c times x to the m equals zero. Now we can simplify this equation. We can combine our x's in each term. So in the first term, if we multiply x squared by x to the m minus two, we would get x to the m. In the second term, if we multiply x, times x to the m minus one, we would also get x to the m. So simplifying our equation becomes a times m minus one times m times x to the m plus b m x to the m plus c times x to the m equals zero. All right, we can factor the x to the m from each term to yield this x to the m times a times m minus one times m plus b m plus c and we know that x to the m does never, will never equal zero. So that means that the equation left inside the square brackets has to be zero. So a times m minus one times m plus bm plus c has to equal zero. So this is what's called the auxiliary equation for a Cauchy-Euler equation. And similar to what we talked about when we talked about linear homogeneous equations with constant coefficients, the solution is going to depend on the roots of this auxiliary equation. All right, so there are three possibilities when we deal with the roots of our auxiliary equation. The first is that there are two real roots, m1 and m2, and they're not equal to each other. In that case, our solution will take the form y equals c1 x to the m1 plus c2 x to the m2. The second possibility is that we get two repeated roots, so m1 and m2 are the same value. And as we've talked about before, we can't have repetition in our solutions, so we would form our solution to be y equals c1 x to the m1 plus c2 x to the m1. To remove repetition in a Cauchy-Euler equation, we'll multiply the term by the natural log of x. So our solution would be y equals c1 x to the m1 plus c2 x to the m1 times the natural log of x. And then the final possibility is that we would get complex conjugate roots, so m is alpha plus or minus beta i, and then our solution takes the form y equals x to the alpha times c1 cosine of beta natural log x plus c2 sine of beta natural log x. So let's work through some examples. For our first one, we have four x squared y double prime plus y equals zero. So this is a Cauchy-Euler equation because we have x squared paired with y double prime, and there's no x with our y, so the powers on our x's match the derivatives on the y's. So we can solve this using the process we just talked about. We're gonna assume that the solution takes the form y equals x to the m, and so we can have y prime and y double prime. I'm really just putting these up here to remind myself what the coefficients will look like. So with the y double prime term, x squared y double prime, we're going to get m times m minus 1 in our auxiliary equation. So if we go to our auxiliary equation, we're going to get 4 times m times m minus 1 plus 1 equals 0. 
So we can distribute the 4m. That gives us 4m squared minus 4m plus 1 equals 0. So this is a quadratic. We can solve it by factoring or by using the quadratic formula. If we factor this out, we're going to get 2m minus 1 times 2m minus 1 equals 0. And so that means that our roots will be 1 half and 1 half. So this is a repeated roots problem. That means our solution will take the form y equals c1 x to the 1 half plus c2 x to the 1 half times the natural log of x. Again, we use natural log of x to remove repetition when we're dealing with Cauchy-Euler equations. All right, here's the second example. x squared y double prime plus 3xy prime minus 4y equals 0. So we'll start by creating our auxiliary equation. That's going to give us m times m minus 1 plus 3m minus 4 equals 0. We'll distribute the m through that first term to get m squared minus m plus 3m minus 4 equals 0. And then we can combine the like terms to get m squared plus 2m minus 4 equals 0. Now, this is a quadratic, but we're not going to be able to factor it out, so we have to use the quadratic formula here. So m will equal negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 1 times negative 4, all divided by 2. So that's going to give us negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. Now we can break 20 down to be 4 times 5. And since 4 is a perfect square, we could pull that out. So this becomes negative 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5 over 2. And then finally, those 2s will all cancel out. So we'll get m equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. Now, even though we use the quadratic formula, this is not complex conjugate roots. So we don't have an i here. So that means this is a case 1 problem. We have two distinct real roots. So our solution is going to be y equals c1 x to the negative 1 plus root 5 plus c2 x to the negative 1 minus root 5. All right, for a third example, we have x squared y double prime minus 7xy prime plus 41y equals 0. We start by finding the auxiliary equation. So that's going to be m times m minus 1 minus 7m plus 41 equals 0. We'll simplify by distributing the m in that first term. So we get m squared minus m minus 7m plus 41 equals 0, which gives us m squared minus 8m plus 41 equals 0. Now again, this is going to be a problem where we can't factor, so we're going to use our quadratic formula. That means that m is going to equal 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared, so that's 64, minus 4 times 1 times 41, all over 2. If we simplify what's underneath the square root sign, 64 minus 4 times 1 times 41 is going to give us a negative 100. So we have 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 100 over 2. Well, the square root of 100 is going to be 10, and the negative sign will give us an imaginary number. So we get 8 plus or minus 10i over 2. And then we can reduce everything by taking the 2 out. So this becomes 4 plus or minus 5i. Now, now that we have an imaginary number, this is going to be complex conjugate roots. And so we're going to use that form for our solution y equals x to the alpha times c1 cosine beta ln x plus c2 sine beta ln x. In this problem, our alpha is 4, our beta is 5. So we're going to get y equals x to the fourth times c1 cosine of 5 times the natural log of x plus c2 times the sine of 5 natural log x. So we've done several examples where we've solved homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equations. Uh, please note that if you want to solve a non-homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equation, you're going to need to use variation of parameters. So let's look at an example where we do that. This time we want to solve x squared y double prime minus 4xy prime plus 6y equals x cubed plus 1. As we do with all non-homogeneous differential equations, we start by solving the homogeneous part. So we're going to find that complementary function yc. We'll find the auxiliary equation m times m minus 1 
minus 4m plus 6 equals 0. We'll multiply the first term together to get m squared minus m minus 4m plus 6 equals 0. And then combining like terms, we get m squared minus 5m plus 6 equals 0. We can factor m squared minus 5m plus 6 equals 0 to be m minus 2 times m minus 3. And so we get roots of 2 and 3. And that means that our complementary function is going to take the form c1x squared plus c2x cubed. Now that we found our complementary function, we go on to find a particular solution using variation of parameters. So let's assume, excuse me, before we get started, remember variation of parameters has to be com conducted on the uh, standard form of your differential equation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by x squared to put the differential equation in standard form. So if we divide our original equation by x squared, we'll get y double prime minus 4 over xy prime plus 6 over x squared y equals x plus 1 over x squared. Now, to use variation of parameters, we're going to assume that our particular solution, yp, takes the form u1x squared plus u2x cubed. And we need to figure out what u1 and u2 are. So we'll conduct uh, Kramer's rule uh, by finding the Ronskians or the determinants, as we've discussed in a previous lecture. So first we find the Ronskian of our solutions, x squared and x cubed. Their derivatives are 2x and 3x squared. If I take this determinant, I'm going to get 3x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth. And so that simplifies to be x to the fourth. To find w1, we're going to replace the first column with 0 on the top and x plus 1 over x squared. That's the right-hand side of our differential equation on the bottom. When we compute this determinant, we're going to get 0 minus x to the fourth plus x. So that's going to be a negative x to the fourth minus x. And to find w2, we replace the second column with 0 and the right-hand side, x plus 1 over x squared. And when we look at this determinant, we're going to get x cubed plus 1 minus 0, which will be x cubed plus 1. Now that we've found our Ronskians, we can move on. We can find u1 prime by taking w1 over w. So that's negative x to the fourth minus x over x to the fourth. If we simplify that, that's going to give us negative 1 minus x to the negative 3. And then u2 prime will be w2 over w. So that's x cubed plus 1 over x to the fourth. Simplifying that, we would get 1 over x plus x to the negative 4. We can find u1 and u2 by integrating these results. So u1 will be the integral of negative 1 minus x to the negative 3 with respect to x. And so u1 is going to be negative x plus 1 half x to the minus 2. We can find u2 by integrating 1 over x plus x to the minus 4 with respect to x. And so that'll give us that u2 is equal to the natural log of x minus one-third x to the negative 3. Now that we've found u1 and u2, we'll plug them into our assumption for yp. So yp was u1 x squared plus u2 x cubed. So that'll give us negative x plus one-half x to the minus 2 times x squared plus the natural log of x minus one-third x to the minus 3 times x cubed. We can simplify by multiplying throughout our parentheses. So yp becomes negative x cubed plus one half plus x cubed natural log x minus one third. We can combine these constants together, one half minus one third. That's going to give us negative x cubed plus x cubed the natural log of x plus one sixth. And then we can put that together with our complementary function to get our overall solution. So y is going to equal c1x squared plus c2x cubed plus x cubed times the natural log of x plus 1 sixth. Now again, note that I, the negative x cubed term that we had in our yp, I didn't express that explicitly because our c2x cubed term takes the same form. So negative x cubed is going to get absorbed into that c2 constant. If you leave the negative x cubed in your answer, that's perfectly correct, but it's just extra material that's it's not necessary. All right, so that concludes this lecture.